Real quick, allow me to give a shout out to my sponsors. Y'all see what I'm rocking? I'm a chill boy. So I'm rocking with the chill boys. If you like what you see, man, make sure y'all get with VB Clothing. They got everything you need. The months are getting cooler. Winter's coming soon. They got everything you need. The bubbles, the vests, the hoodies, you name it, they got it. So make sure you tap in with DB Clothing. Also, major, major shout out to Drive Smart Autos LLC, located at 5750 Park Boulevard, Pinellas Park, Florida, 33781. They got everything you need. But if you got a bad credit, all you need to know is that you have your proof of address, that you have your residence here in Florida, and that you get paid here in Florida, and they will help you out. No matter what your credit score is, contact Drive Smart Autos LLC and go get your new car today. Once again, they're located at 5750 Park Boulevard, Pinellas Park, Florida, 33781, and they can be contacted at 727-594-5110. Tell them Coach Fig sent you. If you're having an electrical problem at home, or simply want to hang a new ceiling fan, or you got some new light fixtures you want put up, make sure you contact your electricians, electricians, Ray Bolton near. When things go wrong, they're always near. Tell them Coach Fig sent you. Hey, what's going on, everybody? You're now tuned in to Fig's Pro Tips. And of course, I'm your host, Coach Fig, and I'm back with another one. Today, I'm going to be touching on a couple of things. Uh... To start it off, hey, just read the button and it all makes sense. What that say? It say fuck cancer. Okay, and for those of you that aren't aware, um, we're we are currently in uh the breast cancer awareness month, but I like to just say fuck cancer all year round. So I'm gonna invite you guys to join me on November the second, uh, so we can be a part of this 5K run slash walk for those of you that can't run or just don't like to run. But it's all going towards a great cause. Registration is free. If you are in the Tampa Bay area and you ain't got nothing to do on a Saturday, I ask you to join me as I go out there and I do my thing in support of cancer awareness. Uh, it's very important. Uh, cancer has uh, no name, no age. It, it doesn't know religion, race, none of the above. All right. So that's that's going to be one of the things that I, I, I speak on. Uh, Yankees versus Dodgers. I'm going to tell you all. Uh, I, what's what's already obvious um, and why and and we're gonna go from there. I'm also gonna answer some of these emails I've been getting in regards to the business uh, side of it, and I'm I'm glad you guys keep reaching out. So I figured, you know what, I'm gonna actually start implementing these emails that I get. I'm gonna start answering some of these questions through these pods, and hopefully, you know, that kind of helps everyone else out there because there may be others they have the same questions but just don't know how to go about it. And last but not least, I'm going to speak on why bankruptcy isn't as bad as people make it sound. Or, yeah, as bad as make people make it seem. So, with that being said, um, I want to invite you guys out to the 6th Annual Fight Cancel Run. Okay? It's uh, Saturday, November 2nd, 2024. It'll be in Lutz, Florida. Okay? Um, I will have all the exact info uh, in the description. So you guys can sign up and join us. If uh, if you just want to come out and support the cause, you want to do the walk, the run, it is 100% free. Shout out to uh, Mercedes Benz of Wesley Chapel for putting this event together for, you know, covering the cost and the overhead and just to bring the people out and create awareness. Obviously, there are other uh, sponsors involved with this event, but it is essentially being held at the Mercedes uh, Benz uh, dealer. Uh, that's where you would have to go to collect your badges and things of that nature on Friday prior to uh, the 1st. Friday, November 1st, you have to go collect your badges prior to showing up for the run on Saturday the 2nd. So uh, what, is this, what, what, what does this uh, do? Well, obviously, all money raised from this event will be uh, donated towards breast cancer uh, research. Um, don't think that because you're a man, you can't suffer from breast cancer. Breast cancer knows no names. It, it doesn't know gender. It doesn't know any of that. Okay, it can happen to men. It is more common in women, obviously, but it can happen to men. That's why there's a there's a things that we should do to take care of our health and uh and remove ourselves from this possibility as much as possible, such as the obviously the food that we eat, but also the deodorants that we wear. Okay, you wanna you wanna try to purchase deodorant that is aluminum free. Uh reason being is sure aluminum 
The deodorants that have aluminum, people say they tend to work better because what? It clogs your pores, right? So when you clog your pores, your body isn't able to release those toxins. And if it can't release those toxins, guess what it's doing? It's pouring right back into you. Um, I'm no doctor. I'm no physician. I'm no specialist. But I do my own research. I do my own reading. And I just get, you know, I won't say common knowledge. I'll say basic knowledge on the things that I need to know, the information I need to know. And, um, and it, it starts literally with what we put in our bodies. And some people may not, well, I put deodorant on my skin. Well, what you don't understand is that your pores open and you absorb. You can absorb through your pores. It's just the same. Obviously, not at the same rate, but you can absorb through your pores. So when you put deodorant underneath your arms and, and you just go throughout your day, as you get hot, your pores open up. And as they open up, they absorb. Instead of releasing, they absorb, okay? So there are many good brands out there um, that you guys can go out there and purchase that are aluminum free, that work uh, and, and, and um, are safer and healthier for you, a healthier, a safer and healthier choice for you. I, I'm not endorsing any specific brand right now. If you want me to, cut the check and I'll do it for sure. I know what I use personally, but I won't. Like I said, I'm not here to endorse nobody for free. Cut the check. Um, but jokes aside, uh, cancer, like I said, man, y'all see the button, man. Cancer, fuck cancer. I stand on that big time. Um, people don't understand. It really does impact people at all ages. There's babies that are having that battle. There's grandmas that are having that battle. There's young dads. There's young athletes. Um, in fact, I believe one of the football players from the Buffalo, um, Colorado Buffalo, over there with Deion Sanders is coaching. I believe one of the players recently was diagnosed with a lymphoma. So I, I would say um, for for the men, I know that you know it's. It's not the cool thing to do, but yes, early testing is probably the best approach to take so that way you can avoid the possibility, or not avoid the possibility, but avoid finding it in the later stages, right? The earlier you detect it, the better chances you are at, you know, surviving such a, it's such a nasty disease. I mean, it, it really deteriorates you from the inside out. So, um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm I'm very passionate about my dad. My dad actually had he had um he had a, a, a form of cancer as well uh, prior to him passing. And so, yeah, man, I, I believe I believe that. And for those of you that are familiar with me and are close to my personal story, you know that I have my own battle with it. And so, uh, fortunately for me, it was caught early, and I was able to overcome uh, that battle. And so, I'm actually just coming up on a year uh, of being cancer free, as they say. So, yeah, for me, this cancer run. It, it, it means a lot, you know. I mean, it has a lot of significance. Uh, just a year ago, potentially, I could have like not been here for my family and to watch the growth of my children and you know continue to live life with my wife side by side. So you know, you got to appreciate every day above ground because every day above ground truly is a blessing, man. Don't ever take it for granted, man. So once again, y'all see the button, man. I'm saying fuck cancer once again. The sixth annual fight cancer run Saturday, November second, 2024. I'm going to read some of the details for you guys that are actually interested. Um, if you want to register, again, I'm going to put the links in the description, but I'm still going to read it off right now. You can register for free at www.fightcancerrun.com. Um, obviously, if I mean, if you're out of state, you know, this doesn't apply to you. If this is out of the country, it doesn't apply to you. But if you live anywhere near the Tampa Bay area, and you ain't really got nothing going on on Saturday, man. Just pull up, man. Just pull up. Just it's gonna be a lot of survivors there. Um, you can actually make these these different connections. All right, man. Uh, the place is gonna be Mercedes Benz of Wesley Chapel. The address is uh, 20, 28, 2883. Yeah, twenty eight eighty three Willow Oak Drive, Wesley Chapel, Florida three three five four four Lutz, Florida. All right. So again, if you guys live anywhere in this area, man, tap in. Register for free. You must be registered prior to the event. Okay, currently we have three days, 22 hours, and 38 minutes remaining for you to register. So if you don't register in advance, um, I, I really don't know what the process would be to get you. You could probably still run it, but if you want the badge and all of the above, the t-shirts and all that stuff, visit the website, register for free. And I look forward to seeing you guys there. Hopefully, we can link up, make an in-person connection. And I look forward to seeing as many people there as possible. Um, uh, it says, uh, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So, please help us fight cancer by, by participating in a fun family, fun, great event at Mercedes-Benz of Chapel. Okay. 
it is a 5k which is 3.1 miles right and then they also have a separate run for the kids so if you have smoke don't think oh i don't have a babysitter bring the little ones with you let them burn off that energy it would be great for everybody to just come out show support and really see the uh the importance and learn about the awareness of breast cancer and just cancer in general okay yeah saturday november 2nd start time is 9 a.m okay so at 9 a.m that run starts okay so you must be there i believe eight o'clock eight o'clock is a, a yeah, eight o'clock would be the early check-in for for those of you it says who's invited local pasco county uh schools fitness centers running clubs girls on the run high school cross country teams mom groups medical centers strollers everyone literally everyone they want everyone there why because it's for a great cause it's to create awareness and at the very, very, very least, you can show support to the people that are still going through that battle, right? And, and you can show support uh, 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 for those that have overcome the battle and, and let them know that the community does care, okay? So it says what's included, bibs, uh, goodie bag with coupons. Obviously, the coupons will be to like the sponsors, stuff like that. And uh, it says t-shirt, all right? Uh, no age group awards, no chip times. Free registration. All right, so don't 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 think you're showing up for a race. This is not a race, y'all. You can walk it, you can jog it, you can run it. Whatever works best for you. What's important is to get the people out there so that we can create awareness and, and bring this to the front street so that people can take it a little more serious. And like I said, men, my fellows out there, please, 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 I urge you. Early detection is the key to a higher success rate. All right, the earlier that it can be detected in your body. The, the, the better chances you have of removing this poison from your body. All right, y'all. So um, it says, uh, what is this? Uh, participants will receive, yeah, I read that, T-shirt, goodie bag, coupons, uh, opportunity to take pictures uh, and fight cancer photo center. So, I mean, this is just to kind of, you know, I guess the memory to say, hey, you did it, you were there. Um, but it's something to do on a Saturday. It, it is early, so I know a lot of folks like to hang out on a Friday, and this may be why you don't um, you don't uh, go go through with it. Now, if you guys were paying attention, you noticed that my sponsors were different at the opening of the pod, right? Uh, and in particular, one that you may notice it was no longer in my my intro is Bush Beer, okay? And the reason why Bush Beer is no longer there is simply nothing nothing wrong with them right the relationship there just i i made a personal choice upon doing research okay and in doing research um i maybe it's something that i should have known um maybe it's something that i should have known already but i i didn't know or maybe i just didn't pay enough attention to but alcohol consumption is directly linked to uh cancer Right, so I'm gonna read you guys some of these facts right here. And let you know this is why I just separated myself. I'm not, I cannot endorse something that I personally don't use. That's one, and did I drink it? Yeah, and did I think it was a good beer? I thought it was a good beer. I thought it was a smooth beer, right? But at the end of the day, I, when I'm making a, a decision for my health and I'm removing things, you guys are my audience. You guys are my people. So I want to give you guys. The same information that I have, I, I want to give it right to you guys. So I'm not drinking it. Hey, I'm going to give you the reason why I'm not drinking it. If you choose to keep on drinking, hey, that's on you. But at least I know I'm doing my part by trying to create this awareness. So, yeah, I will no longer be endorsing anything with any alcoholic beverages. You won't see me with beer. You won't see me with an alcoholic drink or any of the above, man, because health is wealth. All right. If you don't take care of your body, your body will fail you. It's not an if, it's a when. All right. So let me pull this up real quick. Um, okay. Let's pull this up. It says right here, a Yale study says, uh, yes, alcohol is linked to cancer, cancer risks. All types of alcohol, including beer, wine, and liquor, can increase the, the risk of developing cancer. The, the risk increases with the amount of alcohol consumed, even at low levels, all right? So for those of you that, well, I'm a casual drinker, or I only drink once a month, or I only, it's even at low, you're just increasing the, it's not, I'm not saying it's going to guarantee uh, you to, to, to get cancer, but it will increase 
your chances. And this is something that you don't want to play with. I tell people all the time, cancer is one of those things that don't affect you until they affect you. If it ain't you directly, it's a loved one, like a parent, a, a sibling, a spouse, a child. Until it doesn't impact you home, people don't really take it serious. They don't understand the, the severity of this disease, okay? So now it says how alcohol causes cancer. It says alcohol can cause cancer in a number of ways, including DNA damage. When alcohol is broken down in the body, it creates, um, what is this? No, you want to go here? Okay, so, all right, it says uh, increased estrogen, ethanol, and alcohol, and increases estrogen levels in the body, which can increase the risk of breast cancer. So, breast cancer, again, doesn't say men or women. All right, obviously, women naturally have estrogen. So, if you're a woman and you're drinking, uh, alcohol, this is going to increase your estrogen level, which apparently raises the risk of breast cancer, okay? So if you're out there popping bottles, all right, this this might here might be a red flag for you, okay? It says uh, reduce uh, nutrient absorption. It says alcohol can make it harder for the body to absorb nutrients that protect against cancer, such as vitamin A, B1, B6, C, D, E, K, uh, and iron uh, it says inflammation, alcohol can enhance inflammation, which can lead to cancer progression. Okay, so for those of you guys who don't know what inflammation is, it makes things swell, makes them bigger. Okay, so if you have uh, cancer, tumor, or, or anything in your body like that, the consumption of alcohol can make it uh, increase. It's kind of like agitated. It's kind of like a, yeah, it's kind of like an agitator, kind of make it go, right? So it says weight gain. Alcohol can contribute to weight gain, which is linked to over 12 types of cancers. I didn't know that. I didn't know that weight gain was linked to different types of cancers. I had no clue, but obviously the alcohol increases that chance. Okay, so for those of you that go out and you get lit and you pop the bottles and you smoking with it and you having the best time, right here it says, Drinking alcohol while smoking increases the risk of developing certain cancers such as an oral and throat cancer more than drinking or smoking alone. All right. Uh, it says here uh, it will increase the uh, chances by up to 68%. That's more than half. Okay. So if you was kind of 50-50, this should almost make it so that you, you for sure are going to get it at some point or another. All right. So it says uh, the dietary guidelines for Americans uh, recommend that adults of legal drinking age choose not to drink alcohol or to drink in moderation. I'm not going to continue to go on and you guys can look this up. Again, I'll put this stuff in the description. You can read it for yourself, okay? Like I said, don't let them tell you that you're too young, all right, man, because I I, I literally, uh, I was, I was, I won't say I was in shock, but I was in awe about it when it was brought to me that like, that's what was found. And I was like, well, Let's do it. They were like, it's not an aggressive type. Right? We don't need to. No, we're going to take care of this. My pops died at an early age and, and cancer was one of the causes. All right. So for that reason, I just said, no, nah, we're going to do this. And the insurance didn't want to cover it. So we covered it out of pocket. It is what it is because you can't put a price on your life. So for those of you out there playing with your health, just understand sometimes, fortunately for me, it was caught early. It was caught on time. But sometimes by the time you find out, man, you're stage three, four, man. And it's, it's kind of like, hey, count your days. You know, and it's sad. It's sad to see how people just deteriorate. So once again, I want to take time out to invite you guys out to the 6th Annual Fight Cancel Run, Saturday, November 2nd, 2024. And it will be uh, located at the Mercedes-Benz of Wesley Chapel, 2883 Willow Oak Drive, Wesley Chapel, Florida, 33544. Okay, make sure that you register at www.fightcancerrun.com prior to showing up so you can pick up your tags and badges on Friday, November 1st. All right, I look forward to seeing you guys there. Hopefully, we have a great turnout. And uh, again, it's for a great cause. And man, do your own reading, guys, man. Ladies and gentlemen, educate yourselves. This is literally life and death for everybody. L literally life and death, all right, man? So that's why I... I removed the bush beer from the promotional clip, and it's um, also why I'm inviting y'all out to join us Saturday, November 2nd, all right? Moving on to the Yankees, 
Okay, Yankees, Dodgers, for those of you that have kind of been living on the rock and don't know what's going on, all right, it is time for the World Series. And ironically enough, it is between the Yankees and the Dodgers. And I, I'll be honest, I'm not the biggest baseball fan because I'm not. However, I am born and raised a Yankee, okay? As a small child, my greatest memories of the Yankees was watching them win multiple World Series back-to-back -back with my mom and my brother. Like, that's probably, like, the highlight of the Yankees. Um, the Yankees are the only team I've ever gone to see live. Like, I was, I was actually uh, privileged enough to see them in the original stadium prior to it being taken down and building a new stadium. I've never been to a live game at the new stadium. However, at the new stadium, I did go there to watch the, um, uh, the Miguel Cotto in a Fury fight. At, at the Yankee Stadium. So I've been in both stadiums. Now, Yankees are down three games in a seven-game series to a very, very good L.A. Dodgers team. And y'all know me. I give y'all facts over feelings. Yankee fans, it's a wrap. It's a wrap, okay? Our bats ain't swinging the way they're supposed to, okay? Our pitching is suspect right about now. Aaron Judge is, I don't know where he's at. Don't, he's just choking in the moment, all right? Um, maybe next year, maybe the, the year after. But this right here clearly is the Dodgers' year. Uh, Otani, shout out to him uh, for, for, for making it obvious that the Dodgers did the right thing for, for paying him what they paid him. And, I mean, I don't know what more. What more to say about it? If you are a true Yankee fan, you're probably not going to like what I'm saying. But, hey, facts over feelings, man. It's time to hang it up. Yankees are not going to win four in a row. We just we just ain't swinging the bats like we're supposed to. We're not winning the, the innings battle, all right? Uh, uh, how do we give up a home run in the first inning? It's like, come on, man. This is just to start again. This is not the way you want to start it. Uh, you know, all of the whole – hoopla with the whole fat Joe performing, like the words weren't sinking right with the beat. The crowd was just overly excited to watch the game happen. They didn't care about fat Joe being there. Um, however, I will say that he was probably the best and biggest representation for the Bronx, not for New York, but for the Bronx, because if we're talking New York, I mean, you can do 50 Cent, you can do Jay-Z, there's other artists that you could do. Um, but it didn't help, okay? I, Ice Cube came out for the Dodgers, and his performance didn't help them win. They, they did what they're supposed to. They're playing like they're supposed to, okay? Their only flaw leading into the series was going to be their, their pitching because it was inconsistent. Well, it's pretty fucking consistent right now, and the Yankees can't do shit with it. So that's my take on it, y'all. Next time uh, I bring this topic up, I'm almost certain that I'll be saying, Congratulations to the Dodgers on winning the World Series. Um, if if I'm proven wrong, hey, rock it, you know, cool. But I'm a realist, and I'm willing to bet that the Dodgers are gonna Dodgers are gonna clean this up. Um, I won't be surprised if they sweep this shit. I won't be surprised if the Dodgers just clean it up. I I they'll probably drop a game on purpose so they can close it at home, but I won't be surprised if the that if the Dodgers say fuck it, we ain't playing with them and clean this shit up. That's my take when it comes to the Yankees and the Dodgers. For all you baseball fans out there, I'm sorry that you have to put up with this. I know that it's been a long time. I think 09 was the last year that the Yankees won one, so we're certainly overdue for one. But um, uh, keep on waiting, man. Keep on now. Now maybe y'all understand why I said. I wanted the Mets to beat the Dodgers, right? I tried to say, oh, because it would be cool, a Subway Series. Now, it had nothing to do with that. It had to do with the fact that the Yankees would have been better matched against the Mets than they would be against the, the Dodgers. So, for all y'all that call me crazy, not so crazy now, am I? All right, let's go... Um, Let's go into this whole bankruptcy credit, you know, credit, credit thing, right? So, a lot of people... Uh, a lot of people are struggling with credit debt and don't know what to do. They're, they're, they're just, they don't know how to cover it. Uh, my or my mortgage is due. Car no. Oh, I got to pay the credit card. I got you. You playing the juggle game, which I'm going to pay the credit card early, so that way when the 
car insurance or the cars do. I can pay the car or the insurance with the credit card or the cell phone and this and that. And it create, you know, if you was in the circus, people will be clapping because you're juggling, right? But that's not a way to live, right? You work 40, 60 hours a week and you make just enough to cover your bills, all right? So when you, when you just have a job, you are one mistake away from poverty. You are one mistake away from uh, uh, being homeless or, or facing eviction or all these things, right? The reality is that credit, as long as you're relying on credit, you will always be in debt. Think about that. Those cards that you have in your wallet gives you a false sense of confidence that you can purchase this. This buy now, pay later shit, not it, y'all. Not it, y'all. You, you need to have that 10% rule in your mind at all times, that 10% discipline, okay? If if what you're trying to purchase is greater than what you have, to, you know, 10, that 10% 10 that you have available, then you don't need it. It can wait. It can wait. You have to be disciplined, okay? Stop trying to keep up with the Joneses. Stop trying to, you know, listen, life happens in real time, all right? You don't live with the people out in the street. You live with the people in your home, okay? So don't worry about the newest car. Don't worry about the newest shoes, the newest bag. Don't worry about all that. Don't worry about the fancy vacations. Put yourself in a position to be able to do the things you want to do on your terms, on your terms, okay? So it says right here, the reality is, um, and by the way, this is a money wise. This is a money wise article. Okay, it says the reality is that a good credit score feels like a passport to a world of financial freedom, yet serves only to measure your willingness to take on debt. Mama says, as long as you playing with credit cards, you you always going to be in debt. Okay, um, and thereby feed the banking system's profit margins. In other words. Focusing solely on your credit score decreases your chances of becoming financially secure. Because you run up the credit cards, right? And then let's just say you get a come up. You can't do nothing with that come up because you got to pay off that debt. And when you pay off that debt, then you go, oh, I'm going to use these cards for the come up. And then you turn around and you reuse the credit cards. You run your debt up again. And then when it's time to get money again, guess what? You got to pay off that debt. And you just keep on like like windshield wipers when it's raining and the windshield wiper goes like this and the rain goes that way and it goes this way and it goes that way and it goes but if you stop using those wipers you can't see that rain is pouring on you it's the same thing with your finances okay stabilize that debt be humble and you'll be good some people have accumulated so much debt that it's it might take you 15 years 20 years to get out of debt that's not a realistic scenario. You don't want to live 15, 20 years just to start from scratch, right? So I always tell people, consider bankruptcy. Like, what? I'm like, yeah, consider bankruptcy, right? Bankruptcy will allow you, with the exception of a, of a few things, to kind of just restart. Not reset, restart, okay? Now... Oh, I'm going to take a hit on my credit. Well, your credit is why you're in this position in the first place, okay? So stop thinking about what credit can do for you and start thinking about how to better manage your finances, okay? So right here, um, this is from the Washington, well, Washington Post. It says, no, bankruptcy does not clear all debt, and this is factual. The reason being is it won't cover... Uh, like alimony, it won't cover uh, taxes, uh, child support, it won't color, uh, cover uh, student loans, okay? Those are four things for certain that it won't do away with. But when you talk about credit card debt, you talk about a vehicle that you're struggling with, you talk, any of these things that you have created for yourself as a problem, you can kind of hit that, I say, as I'm calling the restart, not a reset, a restart. Okay, and yeah, it might report negative on your report for seven to ten years, but realistically speaking, I know people personally that filed bankruptcy, all right, and within six months they were already getting credit card offers. Okay, rebuild your credit. Okay, 
let's start you low, 300, 500. Before you know it, you got 15, 2,000, 5,000. And then if you fall for it, you'll be right back in that situation. Okay? So right here it says, that's debts that can be discharged. Some debts like child support, alimony, and certain unpaid taxes can't be discharged through bankruptcy. This is because of the public policy reasons, such as the nature of the debt or the debt or the debtor's behavior. Okay, so the debtor's behavior, meaning like I just said, so let's say your debt gets forgiven and it gets thrown out, and and now you got at that restart point, and you fall right back into this. Oh, they gave me three hundred. Oh, they gave me five hundred. Oh, they gave me two thousand. And before you know it, you back that ten thousand dollar debt. When you try to show up at court for that again, they're gonna be like, "Man, get your sorry ass out of here, man. We gave you a break one time, and you didn't learn your lesson. Now you gonna pay it." So stick to that ten percent rule, right? If if you don't have that ten percent readily available in your finances, whatever it is you're looking at, you don't need it. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. If you want to buy something for hundred dollars, you should have a thousand dollars in that account. If you ain't got the thousand dollars in that account, you don't need it. Now, I'm not speaking of things that you gotta do, right? Like you gotta buy groceries, you gotta pay your light bill. Like these are things that you have to do. But if you're budgeting your finances properly, your your funds available will will already be set aside, right? So you should have thirty percent towards what thirty percent should be like your rent, mortgage, things of that nature. Right, then you have all your other little expenses, so that could be another 10 to 20 percent. You should be saving at least 20 percent. All right, so you are about 70 percent already. What's the other 20 percent for miscellaneous things? And that 10 percent, that 10 percent is what you use to buy whatever you want, whatever you want. And if you and if there ain't nothing you want, then you just take that. 10% and you throw it with that 20 and put 30% into savings with that pay cycle or that and that whatever you do, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly. But you certainly want to be able to budget and manage your finances. So that when you're ready to make a move or you want to do something, you got the money readily available. All right. So it says uh, uh debts that are difficult to discharge. Income tax, like I said, is also very hard to discharge, do not uh though not impossible, right? So there's ways that you can kind of battle it out legally to try to get it resolved. But when you talk about income tax, they're not very forgiving, all right? Uh, it's probably going to cost you more in lawyer fees than they will to pay whatever it is you owe the, uh, the government. Uh, debts that remain after bankruptcy. You might need to keep paying some debts while your bankruptcy, well, well, while you're bankrupt or stop paying them to start again and then your bankruptcy ends. So what's it saying here? Bankruptcy can help you discharge some debts and give you a fresh start. That's what I just said, right? Fresh start. Okay. The types of debts that can be discharged vary depending on the chapter of the bankruptcy code. All right. So for those of you guys who don't know what that means is you have like chapter seven, you have chapter 13, you have there's different chapters that you can file. Now, chapter seven is more for like business minded people. Oh, not business mind people that have small businesses. So you're looking to dissolve your assets, sell equipment to pay off as much debt as you can, and then they'll be more willing to forgive, you know, whatever whatever other debt is left after you cover that. So it says here, uh, for example, Chapter Seven bankruptcy, also known as liquidation bankruptcy, involves selling assets to pay off debts. So bankruptcy can also negatively impact your credit score, but it will rebound over time. Didn't I just tell you that? Then I just tell you that, but people people don't do their research. They don't they don't read. They don't study. They don't they don't try to learn this stuff. So then all you hear is bankruptcy. Oh no, it's so bad. No, it will it will rebound within time. It says the filing remains on your credit report for seven to ten years, but the impact decreases over time. The impact decreases over time. Okay. In fact, if you ever go to uh, apply for a loan or anything, they'll say, "Have you ever, have you filed bankruptcy whether within three three to five years?" Like so, the idea that seven to ten. And that's that's so outdated. I mean, there's people six months to a year after filing for bankruptcy that are getting approved for, for different things, okay? It says filing for bankruptcy can help you discharge some, but not necessarily all of your debt. You may still be on the hook if you owe back taxes, child support, or alimony payments, court order fines, or several other types of debt. So obviously the court order fine will be like when you file for bankruptcy. That's the other part people don't understand. Filing for bankruptcy is not free. 
it is not free and it is not cheap okay it's going to cost you a couple of dollars however I can assure you that the amount of money you have to pay for uh, to, to file for bankruptcy and get all clear will be significantly less than what you have in your debt. Because if, if you got four thousand, five thousand dollars debt, you shouldn't. This is not an option for you. I'm talking for the folks that are twenty, thirty thousand dollars in debt, and I'm not talking mortgage wise. I'm not talking about a, a, a car loan. I'm talking about literally your credit cards have you in twenty, thirty thousand dollars worth of debt. This may be an option for you because paying those high interest rates on those credit cards, you're never. You're never gonna get out of it. You're never ever literally when you look at each thousand dollars, you should look at each thousand dollar as a year. It's gonna take you a year to knock off each thousand dollar per, you know, once you get past that twenty thousand dollars. Think about what twenty five percent interest rate is on twenty two thousand dollars worth of debt. It ain't looking good, y'all. It is not looking good. And especially if you're only making the minimum payment, you're never gonna pay that off. Ever. And in reality, you pay, you pay, you pay, something comes up and you use the card again and knock it. It just, it's a vicious, never ending cycle. So this is why I will say if you continue to rely on credit, you will continue to put yourself in debt. It's just, it's a no brainer. I mean, if you use the credit, you build debt. So when you get your money, now you pay the debt, which goes back to the credit and you don't have no more money. So to buy what you got to buy, do what you got to do, you go back to using the credit. It's a vicious cycle. Don't do it. All right. You have options out there. Um, you guys look up, look up some uh, some legal help. Look up some some financial advisors out there that can help you. You know, reconstruct your situation and and, and start to do better, man. Start to do better. All right. Now moving on. Um, I'm gonna open up some of these emails that I got, and let's see. I got a couple questions, or they got questions for me in regards to what I think. So right here from Joseph Aquino, Aquino says, what kind of business should I start? Um, honestly, I'm going to tell you like this, man. A lot of times people start a business in a field or industry that they're passionate about. These are two things you got to look at. What you're passionate about, does it, does, it, does it make good money? Like, in general, does it make good money? And two, which is probably more important than one, is are you good at it? Okay? Whatever you are starting to put your money into, whatever business you're trying to create, you need to make sure that you're good at that. You need to make sure that you are properly informed of that industry and, and that business and everything that it entails for you to have success in that industry. If you try to skip steps and take shortcuts, I can assure you it's going to backfire. It's going to blow up in your face. You do not want to take that path. That's not the path of success. So I would say uh, run the numbers on the average company that has started in that same field. Go look at uh, startup costs. Go look at how long it took to turn profit. And again, see if you're good at it. Those will be the, the starting three points. Obviously, you know, you got to take the, 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 the process of setting up your LLC and getting everything you're going. And like I've told you guys before, if you need help with that, you guys can contact me at fixbotips at gmail.com and I'd be more than glad to help you guys go through that process, okay? So when it comes to what kind of business you should start, I mean, there's many, many different kinds out there. Just make sure that whatever you are trying to get yourself into, that you are well-informed and that you're good at it. Those two things will allow you to find success in every, at every other level, all right? Moving on says here stephanie adams can i operate my business from home i need a little more specifics y'all uh yes a lot of businesses can be operated from home if you do some sort of call service if you are some sort of a, a mentor if you do some sort of online training um uh, uh, you could be a virtual assistant to people. You could be a translator. Uh, you could do sales. I, there's so many different businesses you can do from home. So yes, my answer to you would be yes, you can. But at the same token, Miss Adams, if you are actually even if you are nail tech, right? Let's say you do nails and lashes and all that. Set up a booth in your crib and have people come on over, schedule appointments, and yeah, so even that can work. But if you're doing something like cleaning service. No, you can't work from home. You got to go to other people's homes. Like you have to think what is uh what is the role that your business 
plays in, in, in how your services are provided. And if your services require you to be outside, then clearly you can't work from home. Sure, you can market from home. You can make phone calls from home. But sometimes the services you provide have to be done outside of your home. So hopefully that helped you out. And Anthony Anderson from Ohio. Shout out to my man Anderson out there in uh, in Ohio. Uh, it says right here, uh, I've been contemplating time my barber shop. How much money do I need? Well, if you're looking to open a barber shop, first of all, make sure you yourself are a licensed barber, or you're going to be uh, relying on your barbers to be licensed. Okay, you need a license to operate. Um, and, and conduct that. Make sure you have your LOC and everything in place. Make sure you have all that stuff set up. And in regards to how much do you need, I mean, simple research, man. Like I, I'll do something real quick for you right here, but at the same way I can pull it up, you can pull it up. You can just jump on Google, right? And then I'll put um, how much to start a barbershop. Right, I mean, you gotta think about the basics. Right, you're gonna need clippers, you're gonna need chairs, you're gonna need all that other stuff right here. So it says mm, the cost to start a barbershop in the United States can range from fifty thousand to two hundred thousand. I'm gonna call bullshit on that. Okay, I mean, we're talking probably like a big ass salon. Okay, realistically speaking, um, find yourself maybe a thousand square feet for rent. Ohio, you can probably find it for for cheap as well. Right, so you can probably get. Um, a thousand you could probably get a dollar a dollar foot so let's say you do a thousand let's say twelve hundred dollars a month uh for your rent and any landlord is going to want you to put up a month you know down and security deposit or whatever right so let's say you need twenty four hundred dollars i'm just throwing out ballpark numbers okay don't quote me on this you could do twenty four hundred dollars to get the spot and then let's look up barber let's look up barber chairs right barber chairs let's look up What's the average price on barber chairs? All right, so the price ranges from, I'm seeing 500, 800, 1,000. So it depends on how much you want to go in on it, right? They got, I mean, fucking Home Depot got them for 200. Uh, what's this? Uh, they got the Amazon has them for $75. It just depends on how much you want to put into it. What what look you want to, you know, you want to go with, right? You want to ball out out the gate or you want to build up slowly it's so it's solely up to you but from what i'm looking at on a high end right here you're going to pay about a thousand bucks a chair and in a thousand square feet i would say you could probably fit comfortably you could probably fit a dozen chairs in there you know six on each side of the room you know what i mean um put some booths up put the mirrors up i mean it doesn't take much in regards to actually filling in a barbershop get some chairs for your customers to sit and wait probably invest into a tv um tv's Pretty much being given away these days, you can get a, a, a 55, a 60, six, a 70 inch TV for five, six hundred bucks. I would say, roughly ballpark figure, I would say probably five, five to ten grand should be able to get your business going. But that'll be just enough to fail. Okay, being honest. So if you don't already have your clientele in place, if you're not already cutting hair at a different barbershop or you're not cutting at your own crib, if you're not doing these things, five to ten grand would be enough to say grand opening, grand closing. Okay, so you have to make sure that location, location is going to be important. Okay, make sure you find a location where people are, are interested in those services, and um, um, that you have that clientele. Uh, and you got you got to give yourself at least ninety days, right? So that means you're going to need about thirty six hundred dollars, let's say, uh, to be able to just cover your rent, just to be able to cover your rent, and then you got. Other bills. I mean, most cases when it comes to uh, commercial spaces like that, landlords will typically cover the uh, the light. It's typically like, included. A lot of places give you Wi-Fi now and stuff like that. So, uh, I say five to ten grand should be a safe number um, to, to 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 get going. So, hopefully, this this kind of helps you out a little bit, my man. And uh, good luck. And if you do get it going, man, tap in with me. Let me know, man, so I can shout you guys out out there in Ohio. And uh, wish you the best of luck. Send whoever I got listening in Ohio to stop by and check you guys out. Okay. Oh, let me see. Should I write my own business plan? Absolutely. Ashley from Memphis. Absolutely write your own business plan. I mean, you have a lot of business plan guides out there that you can kind of follow. 
Um, but this is your business. This is 100% your business. So you absolutely want to write your own business plan because you want your business plan to represent and stand for what it is that you bring to the table, what it is that you want uh, to put out to the people and what you want the people to give back to you. So I would say absolutely write your own business plan. Um, write it over as many times as you need to so that it actually is exactly what you want it to be. Um, absolutely write your own business plan. Uh, great question, by the way. Great question. Uh, what is this? Am I better off buying a franchise or starting a new company? Well, depends what your finances are. If you're in a position to buy a franchise uh, financially, I'd say go for it. But before you buy a franchise, I say let them or not let them make them open up the books. Make sure that you see the numbers are where they at. Because some people will make it look good on paper. And when you actually inherit it, you'd be like, oh, this ain't what, it, what, I, what I thought it was going to be. So make sure you do your due diligence. Make sure that they show you all, the, all, all the, the paperwork. They show you all the customers that they service or whatever the business is so that you can see what revenue they're making on a, on a regular basis. If their revenue is not great, I'd say start your own. There's nothing like starting your own. Like with me, everything I do, I put my name on it. Figs, right? So Figs Pro Tips, Figs Express Transport, Figs A Plus Cleaners, all of the above, I put my name on it. Why? Because it's my name. You can't take that from me, baby. All right? But if you have the opportunity, you have the finances in place to go ahead and, uh, and acquire a franchise, I mean, go for it. I mean, it, it will alleviate you the headache of having to start from the bottom and build all the way up. But I tell you what, there's no feeling like it to know that you built that. that that'll be your machine. That'll be your situation. 100%. Can't nobody say nothing. Can't nobody take nothing from you. You get what I'm saying? So, but yeah, if, if you got it, go for it. Why not? Why not? What else? What else do we have here? Um, Lisa says, am I required to have a license to start a business? Depends on what you're going into. Um, some, some industries, some industries do require uh, you to be licensed and certified. Some states um, don't. Right. So some states, some states allow you to operate without a license. And then you have some industries that don't require a license, but the state does. So it's a, on a I'm going to say city by city, sometimes county by county. Sometimes some counties have different rules in place in other counties. So I would say, you know, uh, uh, go on your local dot gov and, 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 you know, see the do's and don'ts, uh, see what the fees are. Some fees are annual, some some fees are quarterly, some fees are, are just a one and done. So definitely, um, definitely, uh, yeah, uh, uh, look into it. L l look into those things when it comes down to it. What is this right here? Uh, currently going into the health and beauty industry. Just opened up my shop. I'm just wondering what kind of competition will I face? Well, Sabrina... Here's the thing. If you already are in the process of opening up your business, uh, yeah, it sounds like, yeah. Well, congratulations, by the way. Uh, if you're already in the process of that, it's kind of too late to be asking this question. You were supposed to do that research prior to that. Okay, health and beauty is such a wide, uh, such a huge market that as long as you have a product that the people want, it really don't matter what anybody else is doing. However, you do have to be mindful of those bigger uh, those bigger uh, chains that you, as a, a small business, as a new business, you really can't compete with prices and, and the volume they can pump out. So you have to make sure that you are consistent with your service. All right. Customer service goes a long way. I go to a lot of places, not because they're better, but simply because the service is better. Okay. Uh, the, the way you treat your, your customers, how you handle them, how you speak to them, that, that plays a major role in being true to the customer. If you got something coming, tell them I got something coming. If you're out of stock and you don't know when you're going to get it, say, hey, I'm sorry, I'm out of that product right now, and I'm not sure when I'll get more. However, if you're really interested in that product, um, put your name on this list, and when this product comes in, we will contact you and let you know that we have it. That's how you build a relationship with your community. That's how you get the locals to consistently support you. And then... Uh, 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 recommend something else. Say, hey, I know you, you're looking for this, but you know what? In my experience, this product right here is very similar to that one. You know, try it out and, and, and see if uh, see if it works for you in the meantime until we get the next product in. That's a way to not lose a customer and still make a sale. All right. 
So what kind of competition will you face? I mean, uh, that's not my field of expertise when it comes to, you know, to, to your specific kind of a, a business. But I, I will say that there's going to be competition in everything you do. It don't matter what you're doing. You always have competition. So you have to prepare and expect the unexpected at all times. Okay. Um, here we go. Uh, all right. Mark says, where's the question? Where's the question? Okay, Mark. My, Mark's question is, how soon is too soon to make radical changes if I struggle at first? Um, if you just started, it's only been a week. Yeah, I'd say, it's, I'd say, you, you know, I'd say you kind of, uh, Waving the, 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 you know, you sound the alarm a little too early. Um, again, you have to, as a new business, you have to allow yourself the time to uh, build your support system. You have to uh, earn the trust of your customers. You have to give yourself time, allow the marketing time to actually go out there and attract the people into you. So uh, if you've been in business, what is it? Uh, all right, so all right, yeah, six months. So you've been in business six months now, and you're saying that you're struggling six months. Yeah, that's that's a uh, uh, a bit longer than I would normally recommend. I say ninety days, right? If, if within ninety days things ain't working, then it's time to maybe uh, change your approach to things. All right, Mark. So when we're talking about six months in, that means that you are most likely in the red. And uh, I don't know what situation is. If you are, you know, self sufficient. If you are, if you're going based off of a, a business loan or what. But what I would say is that if you're at the six month mark, I would look at all the positives, right? I would look at everything that has worked for six months. Keep that, and then I would look at all the things that aren't working in those six months. I would erase that and find ways to replace them. All right, what's going to benefit us? Um, you didn't specify what kind of business you have. Yeah, you didn't you didn't specify what kind of business you have, but I will say that um you could potentially collaborate with someone that is in your field and offer if, if you have space, offer them a space in you know within your space that you can inherit some of their traffic. And at the very least, even if you don't inherit some of their traffic, by you offering them some of your space. You can at least cover some of those expenses, if 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 that makes sense to you. Until things stabilize, um, try different marketing approaches. Actually, you know, hey, don't be afraid to go hand in hand or go out. Don't be afraid to go, you know, guerrilla marketing. Uh, you know, go old school, man. Put the flyers in mailboxes and put them up on 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 the boards in your local supermarkets. Go to the library. I mean, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. Uh, how much of a time you get. Uh, unfortunately, you're six months into this already. So whatever you lost, you lost. Trying to recoup it right away is going to hurt you even more. Um, I like to tell people, sometimes we find ourselves in a hole and we keep digging to try to get out and we keep digging and digging. And the, the more you dig, the deeper you end up in that hole, okay? But sometimes you just got to stop digging, all right, Mark? So right now, it's about that time for you to stop digging Start figuring out how we're going to start to pack this in. All right, we need to get some of that dirt back in here so we can pack it and we can get back at least to that green level. All right, so uh, look out look, look out for local resources. You know, there may be uh, some sort of local aid that you may get, some sort of local promotion you might be able to run to help, you know, bring attention, positive attention to your, your company. In fact, I'll do you one better. Uh, shoot me the details of your business and, you know, in my future part, I'll plug you in. I'll give you a free shout out, and hopefully, you know that helps you. Hope hopefully that helps you out, man. So, um, yeah. What else is this? Uh, what if I fail? All right. Um, what if you fail? Well, I'm gonna tell you like this, and most people may not agree with this. Okay. The only way you fail is if you give up. Trying and not succeeding at first is not failing. Okay, no one gets it right on the first time. You ever see a baby learning how to walk? Does that baby get up the first time and just walk? Nah, that baby tries, you know, might crawl, stands up, does the little wobble and falls and does holds on and keeps going. Eventually that baby starts walking. Okay. So just because you try a business 
and it doesn't work out right away, it doesn't mean you failed. At least you had the courage. You had the wits about you to go out there and try it. You, you're doing it. You, you, you're putting your actions in the place. And sometimes you're not failing because of you. Sometimes you're failing because of the people around you. Sometimes you're failing because of lack of resources. Okay? So just take a step back. Analyze what you got going on. And then reassert yourself. And then maybe you'll find out that, like I said earlier, which was what you started was, wasn't something you was good at. So maybe you have to step back, look in the mirror, be real with yourself and say, all right, this ain't, this ain't my, this ain't my forte, but I am good at this. And then assert yourself in what you're good at. All right. Sometimes, in fact, a lot of the times, uh, we don't love what we're good at. We just happen to be good at it. Every now and then you get lucky. Oh, should I say you, you're blessed to be good at what you love. But there's nothing wrong with getting up and doing it again. Failing only happens when you quit. All right? So kudos to you for taking the initiative to applying for your business, setting it up, having your formation in place, actually launching your business, running it for 18 months. And if it ain't working, it's okay. It's not a fail. Do not feel or think that you failed. All right? If, if you're running and you're tripping, you fall, you're going to stay on the ground? No, nah, you're going to get up, clean yourself off. You're going to keep on going. All right? Same thing with business. Difference is, I know when we're dealing with finances, uh, what is this? Uh, it's the same question. Uh, yeah, no. So I see you. So you've been financing it out of pocket. So right now, if you've been in business for 18 months, it sounds like you are in a position to go to a bank and say, hey, this is what I've been doing for 18 months. I've been 100% out of pocket. And, and another thing, if you're still operating, then that means you, you're really not failing. You're not doing as good as you want to do. Or maybe you're not doing as good as society tells you you're supposed to be doing. Okay? But most, most people run into their first obstacle and they put it down. Look, you know, um, uh, Mark was just asking, you know, about his struggles, right? And, and how to, you know, make radical changes. Or, or when is it, is it too soon or too early, right? And he's only been in it six months. You, you, got a, you got a whole year on him, okay? So kudos to you for sticking to it, all right? And kudos to Mark for, for, for getting it going and sticking to it. And only thing I would tell you now is, Redirect that energy. Look at your local lenders. Um, look at look at uh, small uh, small business loans. See what works for you. And before you go and apply for that money, put together your new reevaluated business plans so that you can show what you will be delegating those funds to. So you can say, I need this much money. And this much is going to go to this. This much is going to go to that. And this much is going to be for that. And then when you go to the banks and they see, okay, well, this person's been operating for 18 months. This is what they've been doing. Oh, they hit a wall here. Oh, but, oh so this is their correction. Oh, this is their projected, uh, you know, uh, returns. Yeah. Yeah, we'll work with you. Most uh, banks and, and credit unions, actually. There's a lot of credit unions out there that work with you as well as a small business owner that will help you get the financing you need and the capital you need to keep your business going. All right? So hopefully this information has helped you guys out. Uh, thank you for your questions. Thank you for listening to my pod. Um, you guys don't understand that without you guys, I'm probably not even sitting here doing these pods, okay? My pod has grown to, uh, let me, I, I just want to do something real, real quick. Uh, yeah, my podcast has grown to a point where it's, uh, it's, I mean, like I said, I'm in 15 countries. And for me, uh, every time I see that, it, it's still kind of mind-blowing every time I see it. And I, I'm actually going to take the time out right now to, to shout out all the countries. Uh, I'm pulling up my uh, analytics right now, okay? And just to see the, the numbers growing constantly, I mean, it really is it really is something to see, man. So we're gonna, I'm going to run off the list. Where we at? Where we at? Okay, so we have obviously the United States, Germany, the United Kingdom, Canada, India, Australia, Russia, 
Malawi, Sweden, Norway, Haiti, Ireland, France, Mexico, and New Zealand. Thank you to all that tune in from all parts of the world. Thank you for your support. Thank you for the streams. Thank you for the emails. Thank you for the comments, the positive ones and the negative ones. I embrace it all the same. I don't never take it personal. I understand that not everybody's going to like what I got to say, and that's okay. Uh, you guys are tuning in. I hope you guys have a great day. Stay safe. Be blessed. And God bless you all. I'm Coach Fig, and I'm out of here.